Hello you all and welcome back to Promote the Goat Homestead and welcome to the first video in our new kitchen. Uh, just to give you some background if you are new here, we have a Facebook farm page called Chastine Farms and on that page I have been posting videos for the last probably two years now and I am just now posting on YouTube and so we just moved to our new home about eight months ago and this is why this will be our first video in the new kitchen. We will be making some sourdough crackers today. This is a recipe I have been wanting to try for quite some time and now that I have a sourdough starter going again, uh, I am able to try this. As you can see, my little helpers are joining me here and I'm just adding everything into the food processor. You do not have to have a food processor to try this recipe. You can easily do it by hand. I just find this to be less messy and it's faster. And I will make sure to leave the recipe down in the description for anybody that wants to try this. But I'm just going to be pulsing this until it forms a dough and then we'll be putting the dough onto the counter. You'll see that it is crumbly, um, but it does form together enough that it holds its shape and then we will just let it rest on the counter. And so here I am getting ready to put it onto the counter. And then I will be uh, putting this into a bowl and then I'll just be covering with a damp towel so it doesn't dry out and it'll just sit there for a couple hours, um, help it to ferment a little bit. And during that time, uh, we will head to the barn and we will be talking about some repairs that we are wanting to do this year. I just finished off with chores and last video I had mentioned some barn repairs that need to be done so what I'm going to mention today is kind of in phase one and so in this column over here oh, there this wooden column here you can see the bottom of the column has rotted out there's quite the gap there and so my husband and my dad actually put up these temporary um, posts here to help pull it up we've got five of them um, but there's a column this one's probably the worst one that there is that needs to be replaced and there's others where the wood is starting to rot at the bottom and so we have a crew that's going to be coming in i don't know if it'll be next month or maybe in march and they are going to take those columns and cut up high enough on the wood where the wood is still good and then where the gaps are or where it's rotted if i understand correctly they're going to more or less create a form underneath the column and fill that in with concrete and so um, that'll be fixed and on the wall here this is the east side of our barn um let's go down here the this because those columns it collapsed it's more or less caused this wall to buckle and so we have to get this wall fixed so that crew is going to come in and do that and then they're also going to let's go over here by this big main door Uh, to winterize this because the wind it'll make it extra drafty in the barn we put up a tarp and we had to do this last year as well but the tarp is more or less only good for a season so they are going to put a door here and it won't go all the way across there'll be somewhat of a gap kind of like what's here now um, but that'll be a nice windbreaker and then we won't have to winterize this all the time which will be nice as well um, so they're going to do that over at the other end, there's also another large door, and there's only a gate there right now. We also have a tarp there, um, but that will come later. That's something else we want to do. And then so once all of this gets done, then we will be able to 
create a more permanent feeding area and so that way that we can feed the goats from the outside of the pen because right now when we come in and feed them you have to fight with them they put their feet in the trough the the goat kids will jump into the trough and so it all all in all it will create less headaches when feeding them and then it'll help with clean, cleanliness as well and then in return cleanliness helps fight coccidiosis and parasites and just the general improves the health of the goat um, also on the outside we want to add siding uh, the whole east side does not have siding on it and then there's other parts of the barn where the screws are starting to pop out the wind will get underneath the siding and it's more or less just it's loosening the screws over time and then sheets of siding are coming off so we want to put siding on it but that'll probably be phase two i'm guessing um, when that happens so these are all repairs that I'm looking forward to, especially getting the columns done so that we can um, set up a more permanent feeding area for the goats because that would make my job easier. Um, so I thought I'd talk about that today, so that's something to look forward to. And uh, I guess we will go ahead and head to the house and we will finish our crackers. Now I am going to be honest, this recipe is a bit of a labor of love. When you roll it out like I'm doing here, you get it as thin as you possibly can, and you have to do this three times. So after you roll it out, you're going to take melted butter and you're going to spread it all around, and then you're going to fold it like an envelope and get it all. I was trying to get it kind of nice and tidy just so I could try to get you know more clean corners. Uh, but then you roll out again, and like I said, you do this three times. And you're just trying to create those little layers that you get in like crackers, um, cheeses is what comes to mind. And I think if I were to do this recipe again, which I do want to try it, I want to try it with a pasta roller. Because I was doing it, I thought there has to be an easier way to do it because my arms got tired. So I think I'm going to see if I can borrow one. I believe my sister has a pasta roller. So I'm going to check in with her. Did you hear that, sis? I'm going to see if I can borrow your pasta roller. And I'm going to try this recipe again and see if I can get these thinner and just to make this quicker. Because otherwise, it's really not worth my time, even just for fun. It's, it's, if I'm being honest, it's not really worth it. So, because I couldn't get them as thin as I wanted, they also just didn't come out as crispy as we wanted. And you'll see that at the end, how they look. But they were good flavor-wise. I enjoyed them. I want to say my kiddos enjoyed them. I also thought after I made these, herbs would be a great addition to this. Um, just to kind of get a more flavor, whether it be like chives or rosemary. Rosemary would be great, even garlic. Um, so those are some things I actually would like to, you know, play with. Here you can see I'm just using a pizza cutter and I'm cutting these up. I'm shooting for like one inch squares, one inch to two inch squares, something like that. They do not have to be perfect. They all bake up relatively the same. Then I went through and I was poking them uh, with a fork just so they're not getting, you know, like poofy. And I have a little helper here. This is our daughter. She's helping me and I'm just sticking them on a baking sheet lined with some parchment paper just for easy cleanup and these baked in the oven I believe the recipe says 9 to 11 minutes I think I had to go a little bit longer but that probably had mostly to do with the fact that I just couldn't get these as thin as what they probably should have been and here you can see them uh, on the baking tray before they went in the oven And this is what they look like coming out of the oven. You can see some of these do have some layers on them, but they are really thick. So like I said, I'm going to try this again with a pasta roller. Well, that's it for today. I thank you guys for taking time out of your day to join me in the kitchen. And I will catch you on the next one. Bye.